Good morning, good evening, good whatever time you are watching this at. Welcome to yet another Pipe Dream Speed Run. This week at Pipe Dream, we just shipped a brand new feature called Delay. It's available as both a pre-built action and available within your Node.js code steps. So let's use it to send a series of automated emails to new customers on our hypothetical app. Alrighty, so first things first, we're gonna start with a brand new workflow. In this scenario, we're gonna pretend that our app is already sending HTTP requests to Pipedream via an API call after a user is registered. So I'm going to use the new HTTP and webhook request trigger. We can click save and continue to create it. And now we have this brand new URL that will kick off this workflow. I'm gonna copy this URL and head over to hopscotch.pipedream.com, which is great for making test requests against our workflows. I've already set up a body below it has the first name, last name, and email of the user that just signed up on our hypothetical app. And now I can just paste in this brand new URL that our workflow generated and send it. We can see that we got a good response back from the workflow. And sure enough, heading back to our workflow, we can see a brand new event. So I'm going to select this event to test our workflow off of. And you can open up the body and see the same information that we saw in Hopscotch. So now the user signed up. They're probably playing with our product. They're probably testing it out. We don't want to bombard them with emails immediately. We want to let them, you know, explore. So let's add a delay to this workflow to give them time to get acclimated on their own. So let's search for delay. It's a brand new pre-built action officially supported by Pipedream. And now we can choose the delay action. We can choose the interval or the unit of time and then the, the value or the length of time itself. So let's open up the unit and see what options we have here. You can see there's milliseconds, seconds, minutes, and hours. I would like to give my first email at least a pause, I don't know, say 30 minutes. So we'll say, we'll choose the minutes option, and then we'll also say 30. So now the workflow will wait 30 minutes before executing the next step. Now let's add an email step to actually send an email to our customer. So we'll add a new step here and search for email. And I like Postmark myself, but we support a bunch of different email providers, as you can see. I'll choose the send a single email to a single person action. I already have a configured Postmark account and a demo email to send this email from. And then we can use the to email of the customer, right? So the customer shared their email with us when they first registered. So I'll just search for the email attribute in our object explorer here. And I can choose the email from the body of the payload that triggered this whole workflow to start. The subject will be hi, and maybe we can personalize it a bit, catch their eye. We'll say hi, uh, search for their name, obviously. Make it a little bit easier search here. We can choose their first name. And then we could say, would you like a demo? And we can add a text by say, let's schedule a call. And the best way to schedule a call is with a Calendly link, right? So we'll go to Calendly, we'll copy our link to schedule a meeting that fits your schedule. And we'll just, you know, repeat the message here. We'll say, hi, um, you can book me here or book your call with us here. And that will give the user the ability to book a call with us. If they have more questions, we can get more feedback and improve it. And our workflow is ready to test. So we'll click test and we should see a success message very quickly. The delay doesn't actually apply when you're in the building mode. And I wanna show you something really quick about the, the delay feature that's pretty neat. So let's scroll up back up to see the results of our workflow delay. And you'll see that there's two special values returned by the pre-built action automatically. The first is the cancel URL and the second is the resume URL. And these will actually modify the behavior of the delay. So you can cancel the entire workflow outright, or you can just resume the workflow and ignore the full duration of the delay by using these two URLs. So say if the customer already books a call within a different call to action within your app, you can cancel this automated email because it'd be redundant, that kind of thing. This is just one practical example of how you can use a delay in your workflow. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you wanna learn more about delays and also our new feature called filters, check out the link in the description and have a great day.